This is my word. This is God's word for us this morning. We're going to be focusing on those words that we just heard in the song there from Isaiah chapter 55. And it just happens to be the, the, the text for our message this morning. So be listening for those thoughts once again, just how powerful God's word is. That just like the rain and the snow water the ground and make things grow, God's word does the same much more powerfully than we could ever ask or imagine. Our order of worship this morning is printed out for you in the service folder. It's so great to have all of you here this morning, and I pray that God's word will grow in your hearts just as powerfully. Let's begin with our opening hymn, In This Place Your Word Is Planted. Yeah. 
this place your word is planted on our path the seed is sown to the church your word is spoken in our hearts a light has shone let your planting not be wasted, wilted soon in stony field. Let our worldly cares not choke it, robbing you of rightful yield. Help us treasure holy wisdom, savor every word you give. Help us cherish Jesus' gospel, bread by which your people live. Blessed are they who truth receiving know its value more than gold. Blessed are they who persevering bear good fruit a hundredfold. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also we have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. So let's take a quiet moment for reflection and self-examination. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child, but trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God grant you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Let's join in our song of praise, O Taste and See. Oops. Put that in the wrong place. We'll come back to that. Did I skip it? I guess I didn't I guess I didn't put it in this morning sorry so let's join in singing O oh, taste and see yeah. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good blessed are they who take refuge in him your word O oh Lord is eternal it stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they who take refuge in Him. <clears throat> All right, well done singing. Thank you. Let's join together in our prayer of the day. Loving Lord, you have caused the Bible to be written for our learning. Help us to hear them, read, study, learn, and inwardly digest them, so that we may receive and hold tightly to the blessed hope of eternal life. We ask this all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God's word that we'll focus on this morning and also serves as the basis for our message are the words of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 11. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked man abandon his way. Let an evil man abandon his thoughts. 
Let him turn to the Lord, and he will show him mercy. Let him turn to our God, because he will abundantly pardon. Certainly my plans are not your plans, and your ways are not my ways, declares the Lord. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my plans are higher than your plans. Just as the rain and the snow come down from the sky and do not return there unless they first water the earth, make it give birth, and cause it to sprout so that it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, in the same way, my word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty. Rather, it will accomplish whatever I please, and it will succeed in the purpose for which I sent it. This is the word of our God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 65. And the title for Psalm 65 is The Seed That Falls on the Ground. I'll sing the refrain with the soloist at the beginning and then please join in at the second time through and then at the end of each verse. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Our 
Our gospel this morning is recorded in Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 9 and verses 13 through 20. We'll be watching this, and, and this, this one's a little bit different from the ones I normally share with you. This, the, the first part of the, the video is going to be a little more tuned for our younger members, and then we'll hear Jesus' explanation of this parable following that first part. So let's watch. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching he said, Listen. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched. And they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns. Which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop. Some multiplying 30, some 60, some a hundred times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times what was sown. This is the gospel, the good news of our Savior Jesus. Praise, Praise be to you, O Christ. All right, I'll invite the children to come forward for our children's message. Ooh, thank you. Awesome. I don't know. You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see. Okay. 
All right, I've got a bag of something here. Does anybody know what these are? Seeds. Seeds. Do you know what kind of seeds they are? No. Any wild guesses? Mm. Maybe you can tell if you just hold one. Here, I'm going to give you each one. This is, this is each one. Each of you get one to keep. I don't think you're going to want to eat it if it's a seed. Not this kind of seed, anyways. Wait, what kind is it? You have to guess. What kind of seed do you think it is? Maybe. Oh, I know what it is. What is it? I think it's the pit of a peach. Oh, really close. It's not a peach pit. Apricot? It's an apricot pit. Yeah, this week I've been helping Miss Gloria. Where's she at? She's here. I've been helping her pick up apricots and pick, pick apricots. And, and these are the seeds inside the apricot. Are those seeds alive right now? Yes. No. No. They're dry and dead. But what would happen, what do you think would happen if you put it in some dirt and watered it? It would grow. It would grow. It would grow. What, and what would it grow into? Uh, would it grow in? An apricot It wouldn't grow into a peach tree or a pecan tree or an oak tree? It'd be a... Yeah, it'd be an apricot tree. And so when you plant it, it grows. And then what happens when an apricot tree grows? I don't know. When it gets big enough, what does it start to do? It starts growing apricots because that's what seeds do. You plant them, they grow, and they produce fruit, just like the story that Jesus told. Except the seed that Jesus used in his story wasn't an apricot seed. Do you know what kind of seed? Do you know what the seed was? look like corn or wheat, he was talking about his word. And he says, when you plant my word in someone, it's going to grow. And it's going to produce. And it's going to make do amazing things. Just like it's been doing in you already in your lives. You have God's word planted in you. And, and as we believe it, then we start to love Jesus more and more. And we start to share him more and more. So think about that during our message. Think about that when you take these apricot seeds home. Maybe, I don't know if they'll grow. You can try it and see what happens. But you can be sure that no matter what God's word, the seed that he plants in us will always grow. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for planting the seed of your word deep in our hearts. Keep watering it with your words and promises that we get to hear on Sundays and during the week and help our faith grow strong and healthy. We ask this all in your name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, hang on. Hang on a second. I've got something for you to remember. For something to you rem For something to you help you remember the story that Jesus told. So here you go. Each of you get one of these. It's a little sticker story sheet. You can work on that today. You'll have to look. You'll have to look. There you go. Go Jazz, here you go, Joni. And Elliot, there you go. All right. And if anybody else wants a sticker sheet, I've still got some left. All right, we'll continue with our next hymn, which once again helps to emphasize how God's Word is sown and planted in us so that it can grow and produce all kinds of wonderful fruit. So let's join in singing, Almighty God, your Word is cast. Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruits abound. Let not the foe of Christ and man this holy seed remove, but give it root in every heart to bring forth fruits of love. Let not the world's deceitful cares the rising plant destroy, 
But let it yield a hundredfold the fruits of peace and joy. Whene'er the precious seed is sown, life-giving grace bestow. That all whose souls the truth receive, its saving power may know. God's grace and his mercy and his peace are yours. A gift given to us, a, a seed planted in us, some of us maybe a long time ago, maybe not quite as long, but it's been planted and it's producing. What a blessing that is. God's word that we'll focus on this morning is a section that talks a lot about the power of that word and what that means for us as Christians. And so we're going to focus on those words of Isaiah chapter 55 and also refer to Jesus' story of the sower and the seed as well. Let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, sanctify us. Make us holy by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. For the past two weeks, our theme has been define the word Christian. And so two weeks ago, we looked at the story of Moses and the golden calf, and we were reminded, what does a Christian do, or who does he worship? The one true God, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We worship the true God. All right, then last week, we talked about another part of that meaning for the word Christian. We finished the story of Moses where he's on the mountain and he gets to see a little bit of God's glory and also heard how Jesus promised that he would give his people something just like God promised the Israelites. Do you remember what he promised that we would find? Not his word. Yeah, we find his word. Yeah, they'd find the, the land, the land of rest, right? The land of milk and honey. And Jesus said, if you come to me, I'll give you rest. I'll even help you along the way. I'll pull, I'll pull in the yoke with you. Come to me and I will give you rest. And that's where Christians find rest, in Jesus. Today we're going to dig a little bit more into that word and find out a little more about what a Christian is. Did anybody happen to see the news on Thursday night? KOB4 had this important alert. A nine-year-old boy named Simeon, was, or Sidney, was lost. His mom hadn't heard from him. He'd been out riding in the East Mountains, and the last time he was seen was at the Zoo, Zuzak's gas station, just outside Tijeras. So what do you do when someone announces a child is lost? What happens? You pray. We start praying. What else happens? You search. You search, yes. But if you're the parents, right, you are just distraught and you start looking. And then the sheriff's office starts looking and the community starts looking. Everybody wants to find that child because we hear far too many stories about children being lost and then not ever being found again. Now, this story had a really happy ending. Because Sidney, who was riding, it was an electric mountain bike, he rode all the way back into Albuquerque, found a store that was open, and called his mom and said, Mom, here I am. He was lost. She had lost him at least for a little while, and then turns around, and here he is. He's back. What would happen if we've lost God? He would look for us, yeah. He'd, he'd send people after us. But it really isn't possible for us to really lose God, is it? Unless we start to wander off the path. Or unless we start following our own thoughts. And there are all kinds of ways that people can start to wander away from God in our day and age. And one of the ways people might wander is by looking for knowledge apart from God. So we try to find wisdom. Wisdom that comes from people like politicians and professors, 
professionals, newscasters, they've got all the answers and so we'll look to them for those answers. Or maybe people turn to self-medication. I can follow this good way because I can get rid of my problems if I just smoke or drink or eat or inject something that makes me feel better. Some people today are even looking for an alternate way in the metaverse. You heard of that yet? The metaverse? Okay, Daniel has. What's the metaverse? Yeah, it's, virtual, it's a virtual reality world. So you can assume a different personality. You can build whatever kind of body you want to have. You can be as athletic or as musical or as intelligent as you want to be. You can be someone completely different living in virtual reality. But what happens when we start heading off the path in our own ways? We start to do that too, don't we? It is so easy for us to try and follow the world's wisdom when it comes to the path that we should follow. We see our friends heading in that direction, or family members, and we say, well, we've always trusted their advice. We've always been able to listen to them before, so maybe, maybe we should just go along with what they're doing. After all, look how successful they've been. And we start to wander. So we really haven't lost God. We've become lost ourselves. It doesn't just happen with the paths that we choose in life. It can also happen just with the thoughts in our heads. Mark Twain once said, there is a charm about the forbidden that makes it unspeakably desirable. So when we think about something, it's easy for that to be what we follow up and do. It's temptation, isn't it? So, I think I'd like to try... My thoughts are leading me in that direction. I wonder what would happen if I watch this. My thoughts are leading me in the wrong direction. Do you think my parents would be upset if I... Thinking. I'm heading in the wrong direction. I wonder what my boss would say if I don't show up for work. I'm going to worry about all these things in my life because they are so important. I, I, I just have to worry about them. I just have to. We've wandered in our ways, in our thoughts, and we continue to wander if, if we're not careful. But then we hear the words of Isaiah breaking in on our lives like the voice in Google Maps saying, this, this way, turn here. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked man abandon his way. Let an evil man abandon his thoughts. The wicked person? The evil one? That, that can't be me, can it? But any time we head in the wrong direction, our own paths, our own thoughts, we are headed down that, that pathway of life. We're headed down the way of life as someone who is wicked, someone who is evil. Isaiah calls us to seek the Lord. He's not lost. We are, but he says, look for him. Look for him. Try to find him. He's waiting to be found. He wants to be caught. He wants to offer you all of the blessings that he has for you. He wants you to know that relationship with him. So the Lord really isn't far away, is he? We might think we've lost him, but he's been right there the whole time. In fact, Isaiah says, turn to the Lord and he'll show you mercy. Turn to our God because he will abundantly pardon so if we're headed on our own way with our own thoughts and we turn, where is God going to be? Right there. He's never away from us. He's always there. We, we can try to wander as far as we can. He will always be there, ready to welcome us back. As Isaiah, as Isaiah says, 
to show us mercy, to abundantly pardon us. You know, the Hebrew word there literally means he will multiply forgiveness. So there isn't any amount of sin that is too great or too ugly or too difficult because God's forgiveness is always greater. And he's always right there with us, waiting for us to recognize our sins, to abandon those paths and to turn to him, to repent and to trust that his forgiveness and mercy is ours. And the psalmist said it like this, He does not treat us as our sins deserve. He does not repay us according to our guilty deeds. He'll wash away every last sin like a giant tsunami wave wipes out a town from the seashore. God wipes out our sins. That's why we need to seek him and his ways instead of our own. Why in the world would he show such mercy and forgiveness to people like you and me? Good question. <laughs> the Lord even says this, Certainly my plans are not your plans, and your ways are not my ways, declares the Lord. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my plans are higher than your plans. If the Lord thought like we do, and if he chose his ways like we do, would the universe exist? Would we be here? No, we wouldn't because we wouldn't be worth it. God could just exist on his own all by himself and, and do just fine. But his plans are different from ours, higher than ours, better than ours. And his plan always was to love you and me. And to love us in such a way that he would rescue the entire universe, the entire world from the curse of sin. And he would do it in the most foolish way possible, at least according to our human choices. He would become one of us. He would subject himself to human flesh and blood. He would willingly die, something that God should never have to, would never have to do. God can't die. And yet he would, so that he could accomplish that mercy and multiplying forgiveness that God promises is ours. God would do it because his, his plans are so much higher. His love eclipses our love. Jesus knew how desperately we needed him, and so he followed the plan, as foolish as it looked, step by step, perfectly, so that we might have hope, we could have forgiveness, we can have life. So God has provided everything that we need to become what we call a Christian, right? a follower of Jesus. The Lord told Isaiah, just as the rain and the snow come down from the sky and don't return there unless they first water the earth, make it give birth and cause it to sprout so that it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That's a vivid picture, isn't it? What happens in spring to the snow that falls in the La Plata and San Juan Mountains? It melts. And where does it go? Here, yeah, it goes to the, to the reservoirs and rivers. They drink that water in until they're full. And then that water goes to places like Nappy. And as the irrigation system runs, the brown soil that's planted suddenly starts to, to pop, to give birth, and, and you start to see little green leaves that become big green leaves until finally you have what kinds of crops? Corn. Corn potatoes, pinto beans, alfalfa. alfalfa. Yeah, we've got all these crops, all from the rain and the snow that come from whom? From God. He provides those things so that farmers can farm, so that we can eat. 
But Isaiah doesn't, or God doesn't use this picture just so that we can go, oh, this is really cool. It's the circle of life, right? The rain falls, it grows, we eat, and it, it just, it's this circle that continues. No, he says, just like these things are true in nature, in the same way, my word that goes out from my mouth will not return to me empty. Rather, it will accomplish whatever I please, and it will succeed in the purpose for which I sent it. So God's word always works. Just like the rain always brings plants, God's word always works. Jesus told that story to help us understand how the word works. You remember the different kinds of soil that he described, the, the way he looks at you know, different human beings' hearts, our hearts? He started off with which kind of soil? Do you remember? The path, the path right? And those little green seeds just kind of bounced and they couldn't go down because it was the hard path. Some, yeah, sometimes that's what people's hearts are like when it comes to God's word. A friend of yours likes to stay out all night every night and you are well aware that he's staying with his girlfriend and so you try to offer him some, some advice from God's word. You know, here's what God wants you to have. He wants you to have a wife, not just someone to sleep with. He wants you to honor that gift of marriage. But the word just bounces off and he ignores it and makes it so easy for the devil to swoop in and take it away so that he doesn't even just ignore it, he just doesn't remember it because it's not there anymore. Sometimes that's what our hearts are like. They're like that hard path where the word bounces off. It's still working, right? It's still there, but we've just chosen to ignore it. You remember the second kind of soil Jesus described? Shallow, with, it's rocky. So they could grow up quickly, but as soon as the sun got hot, what happened to those beautiful little plants? They withered and died. Sometimes when God's word is, is sown, when it's planted, it, it starts to produce very quickly. Someone who came to a Christmas Eve service, a, 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 a friend, heard the wonderful message and she was just so excited about what she heard on Christmas Eve that she decided to come back a couple weeks later. And she came to worship and thought it was so wonderful, she started coming every Sunday. And soon she was in Bible study. And after that she was in the pastor's class to, to join the congregation to become part of the church family and she was so excited. And about a year and a half later, she found out she had cancer and went through chemotherapy and radiation, and surgery. And the pastor came to visit her several times, and then finally, she wasn't answering the phone when he called, and she wasn't home when he tried to stop by. Finally, he got a hold of her, and she said, you know, Pastor, I'm done. I'm sorry, but I can't believe that God would let something like this happen to me. So I just, I can't believe in that kind of God. Sometimes the word is there and it's believed and then because of the pressures of life, it causes that faith to wither. You remember the third kind of soil? Thorns. The one filled with thorns. Yeah, the seed gets thrown among thorns and, and when the, the plants grow up, the thorns choke them out. There was a family who, who loved Jesus very much and, you know, they had uh, two kids, came every Sunday. Children were regularly in Sunday school. Always, they were always part of the activities. You'd call them maybe the perfect church family. And then as the kids started getting older, oh, the schedule changed. And with school and sports and doctor and dentist visits, life was just getting too crazy. The stress grew at work because they had to make enough money. We got to keep taking care of our kids, keep taking care of our lifestyle. And all of a sudden, they, were, they weren't there every Sunday. Now maybe it was just every, every three Sundays. And then two, and then every couple months. One of their friends called and said, are you okay? You know, is there something wrong? And they said, no, we're, we're fine. Our, our life is just so busy. And work is crazy, and trying to keep up with the bills, we just don't have time for church. 
Sometimes the seed is planted, but it gets choked out by all the pressures of world and the need for more to provide for family. You remember the fourth kind of soil? The good stuff, right? The, the dark, rich soil that you plant, and it's like the plants can't help it. They just, just start shooting up, and, and before long, they're producing everything, a tremendous crop. Just like the little boy who, whose parents brought him to church every Sunday from the day he was baptized on. And he loved to go to Sunday school and, and come up for the children's message. On the way home, he'd be humming the hymn verse, the hymn tunes that he had heard in church as he colored his children's message. And as he grew older, his faith only got stronger. His friends at school started to notice and they asked him about it. I said, do you want to study with me? I, I'd like to read my Bible pretty regularly. And so they did. And what do you know? They wanted to come visit church with him. And then other friends started to notice this happening and wanted to, wanted to figure out what's going on with their lives. We want some of this too. The Word produced so much not just in his life, but as the seed was sown among others, it started pr to produce more too. Four different kinds of soil. What was God's word doing in all of them? Working powerfully. So as we think about Jesus' story and Isaiah's words, who is planting the seed? God is, but God doesn't come down and who's, who's planting the seed? Jacob is, that's right. Jacob is, and I am, and you are, because we are the sowers. And what is the seed? The Word of God. The Word of God. And when we plant that seed somewhere, what are we assured will happen? It's going to work. It's going to grow. Something's going to happen because God promised, right? He said, my word will accomplish whatever I please and it will succeed in the purpose for which I sent it. It will work no matter what. So even the tiniest bit of God's word even the tiniest bit. Maybe it's just as you're talking to someone and they're struggling, you say, you know what, Jesus, Jesus loves you so much. He loved you so much that he was willing to die for you. And he loves to hear from you. So can I pray for you? Maybe that's all you ever get to say. Did the seed get planted? Is it going to work? Yes. Will we always get to see it? No, not always. Maybe that little seed that we plant won't show up until the person moves for, to a place like maybe Albuquerque or Phoenix or, or Houston or Denver. And, and as they pass a church, they say, you know what, I remember, or maybe they don't even remember. They just think, you know, I, I think I need to stop there. I need to hear what they have to say. I need to hear what God has to say. And that seed that was planted, whenever it was planted, it's working. Do we get the credit for that? Does it matter how well we say it or how powerfully we preached it or how intensely we prayed for them? It doesn't. Paul says it this way to his friends. He says, so then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but it is God who causes the growth. God causes the growth. Our job is to plant and water. Not apricot seeds, not wheat seeds, not corn seeds. The seed of the gospel, the seed of God's word. Plant it in someone that we know. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And then let God do the rest. Because he promises that my word works. Right? Just like the rain and the snow make things grow, God's word is going to do something. It's going to do something. Because that's what he promises. 
Have you lost God? Has he lost us? No. He can't because he has planted his word so powerfully in our hearts. And that's really what we're focusing on today as we talk about that word Christian. We have seen that a Christian worships the true God, that a Christian finds true rest in Jesus. And today we know that a Christian is planted by the word. That's where we get faith. That's where faith is strengthened. And that's the faith that we can plant in someone else with the powerful word that God has given us. So who will you plant in this week? What word will you share? What hope can you give? Plant it. Because God guarantees it's going to work. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, I pray that that peace will cover you and that it will be planted deeply within you every day of your lives. Amen. This time we have the opportunity to take these beautiful truths that we know and confess them together as God's people. So let's join in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 9 in your service folder. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This time we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanksgiving to the Lord in response to all that he's done for us. In our prayers this morning, we have a number of special requests. A prayer on behalf of Amy Dean's family. Amy was called home to heaven this past week. A prayer for Levita Mendieta. She's having back surgery tomorrow. And for Leroy Jean Garcia have, is having some testing done for stomach issues. We also pray on behalf of Jean, Lori's friend, who's having some health issues. And also for Mona's mom, Domi, who is being placed on hospice care. Does anyone else have any requests this morning? Don? My, my uncle, he had a, brain, a, a blood clot in his brain. He had surgery. It went well. He's doing therapy. Okay. And what's his name? Steve. Steve. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody else? All right, then would you please stand and join me in prayer. Lord God, as we listen to your word today, we are amazed at how powerful your word is. You promise that it does the same as the rain and the snow, bringing forth food and fruit from the earth. So Lord, work that powerfully in our lives. Strengthen our faith so that we can produce a hundred times what is sown in our hearts. And then, Lord, help us to plant those seeds in the hearts of our friends and our families, our neighbors, the people that we connect with, so that they too might know the wonderful promises that you make and that they might know you through the power of your word. We pray that you'd give encouragement, hope, and healing for all who are struggling with poor health and other challenges 
for Maggie's mother-in-law, Jean, for Dion's and Jason, for Dre's father, Ernest, for Colby, for Linda, Willie, and Kurt, for Levita, Leroy, Jean, and Don's uncle, Steve. Please grant them health and healing as you see fit. Comfort, comfort Amy's family and give them the, the sure and certain hope that your word is powerful enough to give eternal life. Watch over Mona's mother as she enters hospice care. Lord, we thank you for the people who are watching over her. Please keep her comfortable and safe until the day you call her home to heaven. We pray that you'd grant Stevie a new job, guide her to the right place where she can use her gifts and talents. Thank you so much for the Native Christian Network and the work they're carrying out as they seek to connect with tribes throughout North America. Send the right person here to Christ the Rock to serve as the coordinator so that they can coordinate outreach to the tribes in our area. Lord, keep blessing us as we work hard to plant the seed of your word in as many people as we can. We ask all of this in your name and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And we continue with our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. So we share in this bread of life and we drink of his sacrifice as he shares his own gift of peace around the table of the king. The body of our Savior, Jesus Christ, torn for you. Eat and remember the wounds that heal, the death that brings us life. Pay the price to make us one. So we share in this bread of life and we drink of his sacrifice as he shares his own gift of love around the table of the king.
The blood that cleanses every stain of sin shed for you. Drink and remember, he drained death's cup that all may enter in to receive the life of God. So we share in this bread of life, and we drink of his sacrifice as he shares his own gift of grace around the table of the King. The Lord invites us to come, for all things are now ready. Please come forward at the direction of the ushers.